All right, everyone. This is Zero Budget Geek, and welcome back to the Magic Do's preview review of all the new cards that just came out in Shadows over Innistrad and Oath of the Gate Watch, which both released simultaneously on the Steam platform. And in this episode, I'm going to be covering all the black cards uh, in these sets. I'm covering both sets simultaneously since they both came out at the same time. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. First black card we have here is Alms of the Vein, one black and two colorless, it's a common sorcery. Target opponent loses three life and you gain three life. And it has madness. Well, as we've seen, uh, there's uh, a variety of discard, drawing cards and discarding effects. And uh, so there's plenty of ways uh, to uh, use madness, especially between black and blue, as I see so far. So you, for three mana, you gain three life and your opponent lose three life. It's okay. Um, I imagine if you have some effects that trigger based off of that, it will be a little bit better. But I'm not too sold on it as is. Alright, next we have an Asylum Visitor. One black, one colorless. It is a rare vampire wizard. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, you draw a card and you lose one life. Okay, so you don't want them to have no cards. Okay, it's a 3-1 and you can play it for its madness cost. If that player has no cards in hand, you draw a card and you lose a life. Eh. I'm not crazy about it because it requires your opponent to have no cards in hand. And I have not seen many cards to cause your opponent to lose to discard cards. So, um, kind of iffy on this. Maybe I, if I see some more cards, the value of that will go up in my eyes. Next, we have Bearer of Silence. One black, one colorless. A rare Eldrazi. It's a 2-1 creature. And it has the void, so no color. When you cast it, you may pay... Uh, two colorless mana, one of them for sure has to be colorless. If you do, target opponent sacrifices a creature. Flying, oh, so it's a 2 1 flyer, but it can't block. Hmm. You may pay two, so you would have to cast four in order for uh, this to kill one of your opponent's creatures. Uh, that's not that great, but I guess by the. T uh, I don't know. I'm not too sold on this. It could be useful, but you'd have to wait to at least turn four to use it. Uh, and it can't block. So I don't know about that one. All right, let's move on. Here we have Biting Rain. Two black, two colors. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And you can pay this, play this for three if you uh, discard it. So, hmm. Well, there was an old card, I believe it was called Infest, that was two black and one colorless that had the same effect. So all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And that was a very, very useful card. We also have uh, Rising Miasma that gives minus two, minus two to all creatures. But it costs, does it cost one more? No, it costs about the same. So I, I personally think this is a decent card. Um... <clears throat> it's slightly overcosted there, but for the madness cost, it might be it might be worth doing. Um, if you build the deck right around this, uh, this could be really good. Otherwise, I'm not too sure. All right, moving on. We have the Essence Depleter. One black, two colorless. It is a uncommon Aldrazi drone, so it's devoid, no color, and it's a two-three creature. And you pay two colors, target opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Um, hmm. Well, you can do that multiple times in a turn. So end of turn, you can uh, tap a bunch of colorless uh, to make them lose some life. So not terrible. Three. Let's look. All right, base form. Three mana for two three is not that bad, uh, especially if you're getting a, 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 an ability with that. So could be good. Could be I'm, I'm just meh for it all right call the bloodline one black one colorless uh it's an uncommon enchantment you pay a one and discard a card put a one one black vampire knight creature token with life leak onto the battlefield activate this ability only once each turn well you probably only want to do it once a turn because you're discarding a card but discarding a card lets you 
uh, get closer to activating delirium plus you can activate madness abilities actually right there you can do uh, pay one to discard a card and then if uh, biting rain everything though you'll kill the creature that you create put a 1-1 one, one black creature to good so the vampire knight is nothing to sneeze at I mean nothing to write home about it's not that great except for the lifelink the lifelink is kind of nice so at least you can block with it and gain a life um, so this is interesting I like this card I, uh, it needs a uh, dedicated uh, madness deck but it could be really good okay here we have ever after two black and four colorless for a rare sorcery return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield so that alone let's see six mana to get two creatures back I'm okay with that that's good and each of those creatures is a black zombie in addition to its other color t colors and types put ever after on the bottom of its owners library so you technically get it back now you can't abuse it by uh, using a thing and it doesn't help with delirium but man getting two creatures back um, at the time that you pay it you're probably getting some big creatures back so yeah I like that card that's nice I want to see that in a reanimator deck all right we have a crow of dark tidings one black and two colorless it's a common zombie bird well the keyword zombie is nice it's a 2-1 flyer so it's not that great for black all right when crow of dark tidings enters the battlefield or dies put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard so uh, that will help with delirium and not much else I'm not too crazy about that nah. <clears throat> there's probably better ways to go about it all right we have a far bog revenant one black and two colors it's a common spirit it has skulk so creatures can be this creature can be blocked by creatures with greater power um, so it's so anything with a power greater than one can't block it. So one three so it'll probably get through most things and it has lifelink Wow all right all right all right, right. so for three mana we're getting a one three that alone is not bad it has a very good chance of gaining through unblocked or killing their your opponents uh, little guys which is nice because of the scope and it has lifelink and it's a common and it is a spirit and there are things that trigger off of spirits being played so this is a good card for a spirit deck I can see uh, blue black maybe even blue black white or black and white spirit deck but this is a card to keep an eye on of in the right deck all right dead weight one black for an aura enchant creature enchanted creature gets minus two minus two well most of the time you want to cast this when you can actually outright kill the creature so one mana to probably kill a weenie is not terrible it's not terrible uh, and that's you know probably one of the better uh, auras that I, I, I've seen around so neat card um, good early game and you know minus two minus two can really hurt even the big guys because you can take a uh, six 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 six, ugh, six six colossus and make them into a uh, uh, four four uh, which makes it much more manageable so deadweight is not a terrible card though there's probably better ways to deal with creatures okay we have from under the floorboards man I love the name even though it takes up the whole top of the card two black three colorless a rare sorcery uh, and it has madness of two black and X all right so what does it do you play it for five put three two two black zombie creature tokens into the battlefield tapped and you gain three life so five mana to get six power worth of creatures they are tapped um, so you won't get to block with them but you get to use them next turn uh, or sacrifice them and you gain three life so uh, that's an okay cost however if from the under the from under the floorboards man is cost is paid instead put X of those tokens into the battlefield tap and you gain X life so if you play this uh, for madness you can get a lot out of it and potentially get quite a bit of life so um, if you do it uh, for the total for the equal madness cost if you do it for two you can get uh, you still get three no you still get three three so you'd have to cast it for much more than five for it to be really worth the madness but interesting card maybe for a zombie deck all right we have a diagraph colossus one black two colors it's a zombie giant hey zombies are good and it's a rare 
Uh, it starts as a 2-2. Uh, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one count on it for each zombie card in your graveyard. So you could potentially be bigger. Whenever you cast a zombie spell, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token in onto the battlefield. Tap. All right. That just elevated it from an okay creature to something pretty nice. And he can get... Man, so he can come into play pretty big and get you some uh, more zombies. So, man, I'd, I'd really like to see a good zombie deck now. All right. <clears throat> Outside of a zombie deck, he's nothing but... A full zombie deck might be great. Ghoul Caller's Accomplice. One black, one colorless for a 2-2. Two, two. It's a human rogue. Hey, the cost for the 2-2 two, two is not bad. And he has a late game effect here. One black, three colorless. Exile him from your graveyard. Put a... Oh, from your graveyard. Aha. Uh -huh. Put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token into the battlefield. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. So, he dies... And then later on in the game, you pay four to get him back as a zombie. <clears throat> well, it's okay. I guess in a deck that is specifically designed for it, um, it might be great. I don't know. Eh, now that I think about it, I'm kind of... <laughs> my excitement for it is going down now. All right, we have Drana's Chosen, one black, three colorless, a rare vampire shaman ally, that's important, and it's the 2-2, two -two, and he has a cohort, which I'm not a fan of. You tap him, plus tap an untapped ally you control, put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, tap. So, we're seeing a lot of ways to get 2-2 two -two black zombie tokens. All right, this one isn't too terrible, because you're tapping two to get a creature, and you can kind of keep doing that. Um, could be useful, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. Well, uh, actually, the four cost is kind of high for it. Uh, I'd have to see a, 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 a real good deck both around it. Ghoul Steed, one black, four colorless, and we have a uncommon zombie horse. And it's a 4-4 four four for five mana. Nah, terrible, but not great. It's just, eh. But it does have, for one black and two colors, you discard two cards, return the steed from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. So he can bring himself back into play. He does come into play tapped, and you can you have to discard two cards, which sounds terrible, but if you can make those uh, be madness cards, uh, that could be really useful. And uh, the discarded cards could also help uh, activate delirium. So it's not terrible in the right deck. Otherwise, he's just kind of there. All right, we have the Elusive Tormentor. Two black, two colors. It's a rare vampire wizard, and he's a 4-4, four four, so nice big body. Man, 4-4 four four for four mana is awesome. And he has an ability. One colorless, discard a card, transform Elusive Tormentor. Okay, so he just can transform into something else for, by discarding a card, which the discarded card could be a madness card or something to help activate Delirium. So what does he turn into? He turns into a blue card, an Insidious Mist, which has Hexproof and it's indestructible, but it's a 0-1. It can't block and it can't be blocked, alright? Whenever Insidious Mist attacks and isn't blocked, you may pay two, you may pay two colors and a black if you do transform it. Okay, so I get it. So you got this guy hanging around. He's a full four. He can fight pretty good. If somebody tries to kill him or you block something bigger than it, you can discard a card uh, to transform it. And then it becomes something that's indestructible or and or hexproof. So he basically turns into misform to avoid things. So and then you attack with him. And if he isn't blocked, um, and can't be can't block and can't be blocked. So you have to get him through unblocked, but if you do, uh, then uh, you can transform him back. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting card. I'd like to see. It, it's kind of a fun card, but I don't know if it's a great card. Well, four mana for four four is good by itself, and um, I, I think you'll see a lot of play of that even outside of vampire decks. Okay. Gissa's bidding. Two black, two colors, and uncommon sorcery. Put two black. 2-2 uh, two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield and you can play this for the madness cost well we've already seen that there's plenty of ways to activate madness and this will let you get two two black zombie creatures in your battlefield well 
by itself not great in a zombie deck it'll be perfect it'll fit right in I'm actually very excited to see a zombie deck. I want to see somebody put one together. All right, Grass of Grasp of Darkness. Two black target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. It is an instant uncommon. Eh, eh. I think there's better for. Eh. There's probably better things that you can do for two mana to kill something. We'll probably pass on that. All right, Kozilix Translator. One black, four colorless. It's a common Eldrazi drone. Uh, it is a 3-5, so 5 mana for 3-5. I'm not a fan of that, but let's see. It has no color, and you can pay one life to add one colorless to your mana pool. Activate this ability only once each turn. E Alright, so you can sift uh, colored mana through him for colorless mana. Um, not that great, but you may need them in decks that make use of that specific colorless mana. So, um... It's just a mana fixer for specific decks. Okay, here we have the Havoc Sower. One black, three colorless, and uncommon Eldrazi drone. It's a 3-3 three, three for four mana. Uh, not that terrible, but let's see what it has. It's no color, and one colorless, and one of any color. Havoc Sower gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. Well, that's, that's actually kind of good. You can make him into a 5-4. Uh, which isn't too terrible so that that makes it worth the price of admission there okay next macabre waltz one black one colorless a common sorcery return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand then discard a card well it started really good and then you have to discard a card um well let's see you get two creatures back and then you have to discard a card plus playing this card so you're getting two cards and losing two cards so net gain of zero but um the discarding you could probably trigger a madness effect or help out with delirium so in a deck with those two effects this would be a good card otherwise it's not that great all right let's see it, the air of falcon wrath one black one colorless for two one which isn't too terrible by itself and you can it, she's an uncommon vampire Discard a card, transform air of Falkroth, activate this ability only once each turn. Again, discarding cards, we've already explained why that can be useful. And she turns into air to the night. A uncommon vampire berserker. A flying 3-2. So, hmm. I like this card. This could be kind of an early, fairly early aggro deck. Because it doesn't cost mana to do the uh, to activate the effect. You just simply got to discard a card. So you play it. Next turn, discard a card. And um, you can probably activate a trigger, a uh, madness trigger. So you get something out of it. And then you transform it into a 3-2 flyer. So I like this card. This is pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. We'll move on from that. Uh, Malakir Soothsayer. One black, four colorless. For a, an uncommon vampire shaman ally, which is good. So 5 mana for a 4-4, four, four, not terrible. And he has a cohort ability. You tap him plus an untapped ally you control, draw a card, and you lose a life. So this is one of the better ones I've seen. Drawing a card and just losing a life is kind of nice. You still have to tap two creatures for it. Um, but you can kind of do that end of turn or as a combat trick or something like that. So not terrible. Um, you know... See how that goes. Uh, we have an indulgent aristocrat. One mana for a 1-1. One, one. Already kind of nice. He's an uncommon. He has lifelink. One mana for a 1-1 one, one lifelink. I'll do that all day. Plus he has pay 2 mana. Sacrifice a creature. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each vampire you control. Well now that is really nice. With um, with ways to generate like zombie tokens. You have... You have plenty of ways to have creatures to sacrifice. So, nice card here. Like this guy. I'll definitely see him going into some of those aristocrats decks. And he is an aristocrat himself, right? So, yeah, it fits. All right. Moving on to the Merciless Resolve. One black, two colors, a common instant. As an additional cost to cast Merciless Resolve, sacrifice a creature or land, and you draw two cards. I think you'll see a lot of... Uh, use of this as there's gonna be plenty of ways to have creatures to sacrifice and you get two cards out of it um, it does cost three mana uh, but I don't think that's too terrible I think you you see 
Uh, this will definitely go into some of those sacrifice decks. Alright, moving on. Kalitas, Traitor of Get. Two black and two colors. A mythic legendary creature. It's a vampire warrior. 3 4 for 4 mana, which isn't too great, but it does have lifelink. And if a non token creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile that card and put a 2 2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Now, I like that ability. Every time you kill one of your opponent's creatures, they get exiled, which is awesome. And you get a creature. So. That's awesome. Plus, he has pay a black. Plus two, sacrifice another vampire or zombie. And hey, we already seen a lot of ways to make zombie tokens. Put two plus one plus one counters on himself. So you sacrifice one of those fodder zombies, and you can suddenly make them into a four five, which is really nice. And you can pretty much keep doing that. So um, yeah, this is a nice card right here you're gonna see that being played for sure next we have the mind rack demon two black two colorless hey i haven't seen a, a low cost demon in a while and it's a mythic it's a four five holy crap four five four four mana what does it do flying trample i love it four five flying trample for four mana is great what's the, what's the bad news when Mind Rack Demon enters the battle battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Well, we've already said that with Delirium, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And he himself has Delirium. It is. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose four life unless there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Okay, so he will drain you for four life each turn. But... Uh, you have to have Delirium, and between the self-milling plus you discarding cards, that may not be too hard. So he may only hit you for, for for life maybe once or twice, which could be rough. But man, getting a 4-5 Flyer Trample on turn 4, or even on turn 3, is really nice. I like that card. I think you're going to see him coming down the tubes a lot. Alright, we have a Kindly Stranger. One black, two colors, an uncommon human. That's 2-3. Eh, eh, not bad. It's okay. And he has Delirium. Uh, when you have Delirium, uh, pay a black and two colors. Transform Kylie Stranger. Activate his ability only if you have Delirium. What does he turn into? A demon-possessed witch. Uh, human Shaman. When this creature transforms into demon-possessed witch, you may destroy target creature. And it's a... F whoa, 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 whoa. Activate... So once you get Delirium which looks like it's not that hard to accomplish. Um, it's going to go from a 2-3 into a 4-3, and you kill something. You outright destroy target creature. By itself, that's good. And the fact that you get a 4-3 body along with it is, is great. I like it for only, well, 6 mana, basically. Or 3 on one turn, 3 on the other. So, I like that card. I think you're going to see that for sure in Delirium decks. All right. The Morkrut Necropod. One black, five colorless for an uncommon slug horror. That's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, six mana for seven. Not terrible. It has Menace, which is really nice. Goes great with the big body. And whenever Necro... Alright, let's say this right. Whenever Morkrut Necropod attacks or blocks, sacrifice another creature or land. Ah, okay, I knew there was a hitch. I knew there was a hitch. But... With the many ways to generate those zombie tokens and plenty of creatures that we don't mind sacrificing overall in Magic Duels. Um, while not a great card, I could see this being used. Um, it could possibly close out games, but it doesn't have a way to protect itself, so it could probably be killed somewhat easily with certain spells. So, eh, I'm not that impressed. It, 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 you know, it could be good. I, I just, I'm skeptical. Skeptical of it. Alright, Kozilek Streaker. One black, two colorless, a common Odrazi Joan. It's a 3 2 for 3 mana, not bad. And for one specifically colorless mana, Kozilek Streaker gets plus 1, plus 0, and gains menace until end of turn. So a 4 2 with menace is kind of nice for 3 mana, maybe 4 mana. If, no, you play it one turn and then attack on the next turn. So not bad. A 4 2 with uh, menace. Is kind of nice. I think you're gonna see this guy get some action. All right, murderous compulsion. One black, one colorless. A common sorcery. Destroy target tapped creature. Well, I like this. It, even though it's only a sorcery, 
uh, destroy target type creature, it will kill most things. Um, and you can cast this for its madness cost. So, um, that's not bad. You can't really use it as a combat trick, but, um, yeah. In a, in a, I mean, it's a decent card by itself. In a madness deck, it becomes even better. Alright, moving on to the next screen. Wow, a lot of black cards still to go. Okay, one of probably one of the best cards in the set uh, is Oblivion Strike. One black, three colorless for a common sorcery. It's devoid, it has no color. Exile target creature. So, I mean, nah, I, I may have spoke too soon saying the best card in the set, but this thing is pretty great. Four mana to get rid of pretty much any creature. And you exile them, which is not insignificant with so many uh, things, uh, you know, big baddies floating around. Uh, I mean, this gets rid of uh, our friend Ulamog. So, um, yeah, is that even Ulamog right there in the picture? But this is an awesome card. I think you're going to be seeing this a lot. Its only drawback is the fact that it's a sorcery, but four mana to get rid of most things is pretty cool. All right. We have a Sinister Concoction, one black uh, for uncommon enchantment. You pay a black, pay a life, put the top card of your library into your graveyard, uh, discard a card, sacrifice, wait, what? You got a lot of things going on here, okay. Pay a black, pay one life, put the top card of your library into your, disc, into your graveyard, you must discard a card, sacrifice the Sinister Concoction, but you get to destroy target creature. Well, that's a convoluted way to get rid of one creature. Um, it's... Mm, mm, convoluted way to kill a creature and, and you're telegraphing it because you have to pay it first. Um, I mean, the only way you're going to surprise someone is if you do it on the same turn. So two mana plus all of this other stuff. Uh, I'm not sold on it. I mean, you tell me. All right. We have Olivia's Bloodsworn. One black, one colorless. For an uncommon vampire soldier, it's a 2-1 flying, so for its cost, it's really good, but it cannot block, which isn't too terrible, and you pay a red, target vampire gains haste until end of turn. Um, I mean, it's okay, it's an okay, uh, I mean, it's pretty nice, for a 2 black, you get a 2-1 flyer, uh, and if you happen to have red, it'll, it'll attack right away, um, so... And it can give other vampires haste. So, not a terrible card. Um, I guess in a vampire deck, it'll be pretty good. Let's go to the next card. We have the Sky Scourer. One black, one colorless, and you have a common Eldrazi drone. It's a one. It's a devoid, no color. It's a one-two flyer for two mana, which isn't bad. Whenever you cast a color spell, he gets plus one attack until end of turn. So he could be a two-two. Um, Whenever you cast a color spell, so uh, you cast multiple colorless guys in a turn, and he can, you know, his attack can get pretty big. Um, so I can see this getting used just for the simple fact that it's flying and only costs two, so not terrible. Uh, I think you'll see that being played. Rancid Rats, one black, one colorless, and you get an uncommon zombie rat. The fact that it's a zombie is not insignificant. It is a 1-1, but it does have Skulk, so it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So it'll squeak by your uh, those big guys, and it has Death Touch. Hey, that just elevated it to a much higher level. I like this guy. Uh, two costs for a guy that you can sneak in for some free damage and hold them back to hold off some big guys so nice I like the rancid rats slaughter drone one black one colors for a common Eldrazi drone it's a 2-2 it has no color you pay a specifically colorless mana and slaughter drone gains death touch until end of turn hey giving something death touch is always fun so a for its cost it's fine two mana for a 2-2 and the fact that you can give it death touch is a bonus so it's okay card Reaver Drone, one black for a 2-1. I'll buy that for a dollar. Uh, it's an uncommon Odrazi drone. It's of the void. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life, one life unless you control another colorless creature. Well, if you're using this, you probably have other colorless creatures in your deck, so that's not going to be a problem. So um, one mana for a 2-1 is not bad at all. Got to use it in a Odrazi deck, though. Uh, Stallion of Ashmouth. Uh, for Ashmouth, 
All right, one black, three colorless, four common nightmare horse. Um, four mana for three three meh. But let's see what its delirium ability is. Uh, while you have delirium, play pay a black and a colorless. Stallion of Ashmal Gate gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Activate this ability only if you have delirium. So he can become a four four. At least he can become even bigger because you can looks like you can keep paying that. So he can turn into a, a pretty big creature. So not bad. I mean, at its base cost, it's not. Eh, it's just okay to terrible, uh, but its ability can get bigger, and black has lots of ways to get delirium going. So uh, we'll see how that, uh, you know, see if people use that. All right, we have Rotted Hulk, one black, three colors for a common elemental, and it's just a two five. Uh, no thanks. I haven't seen any reason for elementals uh, to be all that noteworthy. Okay, we have Stromkirk Mentor, one black. Three colors for a vampire soldier. Vampire is important. And it's a 4-2 for four, four mana, which is me. Eh. All right, it's not terrible, but not great. When Stormkirk, Stromkirk Mentor enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on another target vampire you control. So this is strictly for a vampire deck. Um, it's a 4-2, makes your other vampire, another vampire bigger. Eh, it's okay. Uh, I'd have to see people use it see if it's worth it I'm not sure if it really is sanitarium skeleton I love this picture all right one black for a one two common skeleton not bad at all let's see what its ability is one black and two colorless return sanitarium skeleton from your graveyard to your hand um hey I like it I like this guy one mana for one two is, is not great great early game card and you can always return them to your hand er, er, later um, great sacrifice fodder. We saw a bunch of cards uh, earlier that uh, require sacrifices. So here you go. Here's one, here's one of them. Sacrifice them and you can bring them back later. Tar Snare. One black, two colors for a common instant. Tar creature gets minus three, minus two until end of turn. Hmm. I don't know what to think of this. Um. I guess it's okay. I think black seems to have much better removal um, than this so I'm not too crazy about this I don't know if you're gonna see much play in uh, this yeah yeah I don't know not no likey no likey too much you guys can convince me otherwise down in the comments all right we have sifter of skulls one black three colorless uh, it is an uh, losing train of thought here we have a rare Eldrazi here uh, it's a 4-3 so 4 mana for 4-3 not bad at all has no color whenever another non-token creature you control dies put a 1-1 one, one color sign creature token that you can sacrifice for mana whenever another non-token creature you control dies hey not bad at all turn your oh yeah you know what because you're going to be sacrificing stuff with all these nifty new black sacrifice cards. This could get really, really neat. You'll see this guy in those sacrifice decks. I look forward to seeing them. All right. Next, we have Throttle. One black, four colorless. Uh, for a common instant, target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. For five mana, I'd rather just outright kill things that we've seen before. So, no thanks. I'll pass on that. All right. We, here we have the Tooth Collector. One black, two colors, and uncommon human rogue. It's a 3 2. When Tooth Collector enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's okay. But he has delirium. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard, target creature that player control gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So. When he comes into play, he pulls out someone's tooth, and then he continually pulls out a tooth every turn if you have Delirium. It's just okay. It's just okay. I guess in a Delirium deck, it could be really useful, but I don't know. I'd have to see it in action. It definitely requires um, a deck to be built around them, but it could be fun. Uh, but again, I it's probably just fun, not a game-changing card, but hey, you guys can prove me wrong. Zulaport Chain Mage, one black, three colorless for a human shaman ally. That's important. It's a common. It's a 4 2 for 4 mana, which isn't too terrible. And you tap him plus an ally, and target opponent loses two life. Meh. Meh. I'll probably pass on this most of the time. 
Alright, Twins of Mara Estate, 1 black, 4 colors, for a common vampire. It's a 3-5 five for 5 mana. Uh, not good. And, but you can play this for his madness cost, which the madness cost is 3. So 3 mana for 3-5 is not that great. The fact that it's a vampire makes it a little bit better, but um, not too convinced. It looks like we there might be better things we, we may want to do. So we'll pass on that. Uh, over here we have Untamed Hunger. One black, two colors for a common aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus one, and has menace. Well, the plus two, plus one's nice. The menace is even better. Not too crazy about it. There's probably better way. There's better ways to get uh, get a creature through unblocked. So I'm not too sold on that. All right, Vampire Envoy. One black, two colors for a common vampire cleric ally. It's a vampire and an ally, which is very important. It is a 1-4, so it's a decent defender for 3 mana. And it is flying, so it's a very good defender. Flying. Whenever Vampire Envoy becomes tapped, you gain 1 life. So if you attack with him, which you probably won't do very often, you'll gain a life. Um, I think this is an okay card. In a vampire and or ally deck, uh, it'll be a fantastic card. Um, but it's pretty much limited to those, uh, those decks. All right. Next we have the Vessel of Malinity, uh, one black and one colorless, uh, a common enchantment, a black and a colorless, sacrifice Vessel of Malinity, Malinity, target opponent exi exiles, two cards from his or her hand, activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. Here we go, finally some good, uh, well it's not really a discard but essentially it's a hand destruction. Uh, card and you can have four of these in your deck so if you're going the discard route this could be very useful outside of that not so much all right visions of brutality one black one colors for an uncommon aura uh, devoid it has no color you enchant the creature enchant the creature can't block whenever enchant the creature deals damage its controller loses that much life so okay so you put this on one of their big fatties, uh, they can't block with it anymore. They can attack, however, in addition to damaging you, that creature is going to damage its controller too. So, doesn't really protect you, but it may entice your opponent to not want to attack much. So, um, being that we're in black, I'd rather just outright kill it. Um, but for a low cost, it's not that terrible. But I think there's better answers, so I'm not too sold on it. All right, and the last card in black that we're going to look at is Witness the End. One black, three colors. It's a common sorcery, and it has no color. Target opponent exiles two cards from his or her hand and loses two life. All right. Man, this combined with uh, the vessel, uh, that's eight cards potentially alone that you can use to uh, attack your your opponent's hand and it and this was kind of nice that it loses two life so if you're going the hand destruction strategy this will be a good card to have if you're not then it's not that great so that's it for black guys i want to hear your thoughts on these cards let me know what you think if i've mentioned cards that i thought were good and are not so good let me know why down in the comments and if i thought a card was not that great but you think it's great also let me know guys hopefully you found this video interesting if you like this video give me a like think about subscribing to see more videos and guys thanks for watching and i'll see you soon